History of the La Raza Gang in Chicago. Don't get it, Cosme Cortez, y'all know the business. Okay, oh, baby, I can't We is come get Keys kill us, In the annals of Chicago's history, the narrative of La Raza emerges as a poignant tale of resilience, rebellion, and survival, originating amidst the tumultuous socio-political landscapes of the 1980s. La Raza, a gang primarily composed of Mexican youths, navigated through the intricate and often violent tapestry of gang dynamics, alliances, and territorial disputes. Their story, woven through the streets and neighborhoods of Chicago and its suburbs, reflects not only their struggle for survival and dominance amidst the chaos of gang warfare, but also a deeper, more intrinsic desire for identity, respect, and autonomy. This narrative seeks to explore the multifaceted journey of La Raza, from their inception amidst the struggles of Mexican immigrants to their evolution into one of the most notorious gangs within the city and beyond. In the pivotal year of 1980, a significant surge in Mexican migration unfolded across the United States as numerous individuals sought labor opportunities within its borders. The journey, however, was far from smooth. Many newcomers, particularly those who settled in Pilsen, encountered not only the harsh realities of discrimination and ridicule, but also faced it from their Americanized counterparts. Young Mexican laborers and newcomers, often carrying hard-earned cash from a day's toil, became frequent targets of neighborhood gangs. The Latin Counts, Bishops, Latin Brother, Laughlin Lovers, Stoneheads, Party Masters, Damon Boys, Tokers, and Latin Kings were notorious for bullying and robbing these individuals, sowing seeds of fear and resentment within the community. However, amidst the chaos, a spark of resistance kindled in the hearts of some Mexican youths at 17th and Racine. Exhausted and frustrated by the relentless harassment, they united under the leadership of Michael Brio and Ruben, forging a new path of defiance and solidarity. Thus, La Raza was born. The name La Raza and the adoption of the Mexican flag colors were emblematic of a profound pride in their roots and a readiness to fiercely defend their heritage and people, even if it meant risking their lives. This bold move was met with hostility from rival gangs, who sought to strip them of their name and colors. Yet, Laraza stood in deter, meeting opposition with formidable resistance, and in doing so, itching a new chapter of resilience and unity amidst the struggles of their time. In the initial years of the 1980s, Laraza endeavored to carve out a space of camaraderie and safety amidst the tumultuous environment, consciously steering clear of the prevalent gang activities. Their aspiration was simple, to establish a hangout group, a sanctuary where they could protect one another from the pervasive threats that loomed in their neighborhood. Stationing themselves in Vorjok Park, nestled between Colored and in Racine, Lar as a youth sought to maintain a semblance of normalcy. Aspiring to be predominantly law-abiding youngsters simply desiring a safe space to congregate and play. However, the park, a contested territory among rival gangs, became a crucible where even the act of leisure became a perilous endeavor. Despite their earnest attempts to avoid entanglement in the violent undercurrents of the streets, the persistent harassment from rival factions left La Raza with little choice but to fight back. Their initial vision of a peaceful refuge gradually morphed into a necessity for active defense, as the youths found themselves inadvertently drawn into the very conflict they had sought to avoid. Thus, amidst the echoes of conflict that reverberated through the park, Laraza stood resilient, a beacon of unity and resistance against the oppressive forces that sought to destabilize their pursuit of security and fellowship. In the tumultuous landscape of 1981, Laraza found themselves ensnared in escalating conflicts with neighborhood gangs, propelling them into a crucible of violence and resistance. 
the skirmishes intensified, and a pivotal decision loomed over La Raza. They opted to ally with the Folk Alliance, standing shoulder to shoulder with their staunch allies, the Party People. Much like the Party People, Lurazi entered the Folk Alliance under the aegis of the Little Village to Sixes. However, they carved a distinct identity within the Alliance. While the Party People adopted the gangster moniker, Lurazi chose a different path. Embracing Insane as their identifier, a moniker utilized by the Satan Disciples. It's crucial to note that despite sharing a moniker, Laraza and the Satan Disciples were bound solely by their common affiliation with the folks, without any direct ties intertwining their activities or objectives. Thus, amidst the chaos and strife that permeated the streets, Laraza navigated through the complexities of alliances and rivalries, endeavoring to safeguard their members and uphold their unity against the turbulent backdrop of gang conflicts. In the vibrant yet tumultuous year of 1980, Laraza and party people, both nascent entities, emerged as close allies. Their bonds forged not just through sheer timelines but through common struggles. Originating as party crews, both groups predominantly comprised Mexican youths, many freshly arrived from Mexico, navigating the challenging terrains of a new country while simultaneously grappling with neighborhood gangs seeking to exploit them. Rumors and narratives have woven through the community, suggesting affiliations and origins of La Raza that intertwine with other groups, such as the Brazers. While friendships and alliances may have existed, given the shared struggles and common adversaries, it is pivotal to clarify that La Raza was not birthed from the Brazers, as is often misconstrued. Similarly, stories have circulated, suggesting that La Raza was an offshoot of the party people or other various groups, which also do not align with the truth. La Raza, despite the myriad of tales that seek to embed them within the histories of other entities, began as an independent group, originating from a genuine and original foundation. Laraza has always embodied the spirit of lone wolves, occasionally forming alliances yet maintaining their autonomy and originality. The narrative that they were once owned or controlled by other gangs upon their inception is a myth. Laraza, with its unique inception and journey, has always stood independently, navigating through the complexities of alliances, rivalries, and the challenges that permeated their environment, while steadfastly preserving their original identity and unity. The narrative of La Raza took a nuanced turn with the inception of Tiny Raza, a younger faction that established its roots at 21st and through. This development marked a gradual expansion of La Raza, amplifying their presence and recognition within the neighborhood. However, the year also brought with it a somber and pivotal moment that would indelibly mark La Raza's journey. The brutal ginning down of a member named Martin not only shook the community, but also catalyzed a transformation within La Raza, nudging them closer to the precipice of gang-related activities. The subsequent years further entrenched La Raza into a harsher reality. The tragic killings of Mano and Snake in 1984, followed by the death of Mike Brio the same year at the hands of Racine Street, Latin Counts, not only solidified La Raza evolution into a more hardcore gang-banging crew, but also painted a target on their backs, making them a prominent focus of rival entities. These tragic events, embedded in the memories and histories of La Raza, not only hardened their resolve, but also shaped their trajectory as they navigated through an increasingly complex and violent landscape, forever altered by loss and a deepening entanglement in the gang conflicts that permeated their environment. 1985 marked a pivotal chapter in the unfolding story of La Raza, as their influence permeated new territories, notably within the back of the Yards community. Spearheaded by Beto, 
The establishment of the 48th Street La Raza branch emerged through a strategic alliance with the 48th Street Boys, a gang that had carved its own notorious path in the early 1980s. Situated at 48th and Laughlin, this new section not only expanded La Raza geographical influence, but also etched its name into the annals of gang history within the back of the yards. This particular branch would ascend to legendary status, evolving to become one of the largest and most dominating gangs in the community. The expansion and subsequent dominance of La Raza in new territories underscored their growing influence and strategic alliances. Weaving a complex tapestry of power, rivalry, and survival within the intricate web of gang dynamics that defined the era and the community. The year 1985 heralded a significant area of expansion for La Raza, as they unfurled their influence across multiple new territories throughout the city. This period witnessed the establishment of La Raza in diverse locales such as West Humboldt Park, Hermosa, Ashburn, and Rogers Park. With the branches in Rogers Park, West Humboldt Park, and Hermosa earning particularly legendary statuses within the gang's history, La Raza, while expanding and solidifying their presence, also navigated through a unique dynamic with law enforcement and the general public, owing to their name and colors. La Raza, translating to the race in Spanish, and the utilization of the Mexican flag colors allowed them a certain degree of camouflage within the community. Any Mexican individual could wave the national flag and proclaim they are La Raza without explicitly affiliating with the gang. This presented a complex challenge for the Chicago police. Harassing or targeting someone for claiming to be La Raza and donning the Mexican flag colors and emblems could potentially be construed as a violation of civil rights. Thus, La Raza managed to blend into the community, navigating through a cloak of cultural and national identity until the late 1980s, when their activities became more discernible to law enforcement and the public. This subtle intertwining of cultural identity and gang affiliation crafted a unique and complex narrative within the broader tapestry of gang dynamics within the city. The mid-1980s witnessed a perceptible shift in the dynamics surrounding La Raza, as their actions escalated in violence and their name began to reverberate with a more ominous undertone throughout the community. Engaging in more aggressive gang banging, members of La Raza began to resort to lethal means, shooting rivals dead in the escalating conflicts. A unique aspect of this period was that many older members, with limited ties to the United States, had the option to flee to Mexico after committing violent acts, thereby evading the clutches of law enforcement. 1988 marked a particularly turbulent chapter for La Raza as they plunged into a war with Ambrose along 18th Street. In March of that year, an incident where some Ambrose members attacked a member of La Raza spiraled into a deadly confrontation. According to the court case of People vs. Quiroz, La Raza gang members Martin Quiroz and Jose Anaya retaliated by shooting and killing Ambrose gang member Jesus Sanchez. Simultaneously, La Raza found themselves embroiled in another conflict at Cullerton and Loomis, where they were in close proximity to their allies, the Two Two Boys. However, as the Two Six and Two Two Boys descended into war and considering La Raza's alliance with Two Six, a subsequent conflict ignited with the Two Two Boys by the end of 1986. These conflicts and alliances, woven through the latter half of the 1980s, not only intensified La Raza activities and reputation, but also embedded them deeper into the complex and violent tapestry of gang warfare that permeated the streets of Chicago during this era. In the early 1990s, La Raza embarked on a pioneering expansion into the suburbs, establishing presences in Streamwood, Rockford, Carpentersville, and a notable section in Cicero at 14th and 49th in the Grant Works area. 
This period also saw a temporary cessation of hostilities with Ambrose, with the war that had defined much of their previous interactions dying out around 1990 and remaining dormant until its resurgence in the mid-1990s. However, 1992 brought new conflicts to the forefront in Cicero, as a war erupted with the two two boys. The latter had established their presence on the corner of 14th and 49th since 1980, and now, over a decade later, Lar Azza was making inroads into the same territory. This proximity ignited a major gang war, as the two groups found themselves in too close quarters, sparking territorial disputes and violent confrontations. This period, characterized by both expansion and conflict, further embedded La Raza into the intricate web of gang dynamics, not only within the city of Chicago, but also extending into the suburbs, as they navigated through the complexities of territorial control, alliances, and rivalries. 1994 witnessed a seismic shift in the relationships and alliances within the gang landscapes, as La Raza found themselves embroiled in a war with their longtime allies the party people. The catalyst for this conflict was situated at 61st in Fairfield, where three members of La Raza switched allegiances to the party people, sparking anger and resentment within the 61st Street branch of La Raza. The leader of this La Raza section conveyed his grievances to the Pilsen La Raza leadership, igniting fury within the Pilsen leader. Subsequently, he visited the party people at 17th in May, vociferously expressing his dissatisfaction. However, this expression was perceived as disrespect by the party people, and the situation escalated dramatically when a member of the party people pulled out a shotgun, shooting the La Raza leader in the chest and killing him. This tragic incident ignited a vicious, unrelenting war that would not find resolution. The warfare, particularly intense at 61st and Fairfield, rendered the territory no longer beneficial for La Raza. Consequently, after engaging in violent confrontations with the party people, La Raza vacated the territory in 1995. This period underscored the volatility and fragility of alliances within the gang dynamics, as friendships transformed into lethal enmities, and territories once held were abandoned amidst the chaos and violence of a nending conflict. The 1990s saw La Reza embroiled in numerous brutal and bloody gang wars, yet paradoxically, they continued to expand in size and their actions seemingly escalated in violence. Throughout much of this period, La Reza maintained a close alliance with 2-6, a relationship that would, however, be tested in 1998. A territorial dispute over 42nd and Mozart, which was within 2-6's domain, became the flashpoint for conflict between the two gangs. La Raza, infringing upon 2-6's drug business and unwilling to relinquish the territory, found themselves at war with their former allies. This conflict raged for about a year until a truce was brokered driven by both gangs facing a common adversary in the Saints. In a strategic move, La Raza withdrew from the disputed territory, reallocating more soldiers to 48th Street, both as an investment strategy and to maintain relations with 2-6. This period underscored the fluidity and complexity of gang alliances and territories where friendships could morph into conflicts and strategic decisions were made to balance power, maintain relationships, and navigate through the intricate and often violent dynamics of gang warfare. Navigating through the intricate dynamics of territorial control and investment, Lar Azza eventually shifted focus from Cortland and Ked Vale, directing more resources towards Harding and Wabanzia. Despite the numerous conflicts and challenges encountered over the years, Lar Azza has managed to retain much of its territory, only conceding one suburban investment in Carpentersville, primarily due to police intervention. Since its inception in 1980, Lar Azza has maintained a potent presence within the gang landscapes, 
earning a reputation for being one of the more vicious, aggressive, and violent organizations. Their journey, marked by strategic expansions, territorial disputes, and unyielding resilience, has seen them navigate through the complexities of alliances, rivalries, and conflicts, maintaining their stronghold and influence across various territories and periods. The journey of La Raza, from its inception amidst the struggles and conflicts of the 1980s to its evolution and expansion through the subsequent decades, provides a complex and multifaceted narrative fathom slash him intertwines with the broader tapestry of gang dynamics, socio-political contexts, and immigrant experiences within Chicago and its suburbs. Their story, marked by resilience, strategic alliances, territorial disputes, and an unyielding spirit of survival, reflects a deeper narrative that transcends beyond the realms of gang warfare, providing a lens through which to explore themes of identity, belonging, resistance, and survival amidst the complexities and challenges of urban landscapes. As we navigate through the chapters of their history, we are invited to delve deeper into the intricate web of their experiences, conflicts, and strategies, exploring not only the external conflicts that define their journey, but also the internal dynamics that shape their identity, alliances, and survival strategies amidst the chaos and violence that permeated their environments.